minutes or Sorry. I'll go longer. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's fine. That's okay. It doesn't matter. I got it. There's a guy with his 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 guy Okay, let's begin with the second phase. I hope uh, the last, uh, the first part was really interesting. So we'll have a little demonstration what the next phase could be and what can you do with the information. Let's uh, welcome Chris Nickerson. Is it like still really hot or am I just still drunk? The guess is both. That's good. Um, hi, I'm Chris. Um, if you fall asleep, that's cool. I'll throw something. I have a ton of stuff to throw. Uh, we're going to talk about stuff uh, affectionately known as, uh, as Chris would call it, breaking into shit. Uh, <laughs> yay, breaking into shit. Um, no, I, I want to talk about the reality of security and not the hypothetical world of security where everybody's like, well, I could break into this. Well, then why didn't you? Well, I, I could someday. Someone could do Good, show them. Like, don't, don't continue this scale of telling everyone what could be done because they're not going to respond. It's, it's the sky is falling mentality that's got us into the problem that we're in. You have all these testers going, the sky's falling, and the executives go, no, it's not. Look, there's nothing falling. Make it rain. Make it fall. I mean, show them exactly how horrible the world can be, and then they're like, I'm so happy you're on my side. And now we need to fix stuff. So that's what we're going to talk about, okay? Cool. Um, I love myself. That's me. Whatever. I've done security stuff all over the place. Um, I don't know how much else to say about it. I run a podcast that I rant and rave and swear at people the whole time, and we talk about security once in a while. Um, write articles. Uh, I've been doing it kind of everywhere from the military to being a formal suit and tie auditor to running assessment teams to having my own company to breaking into shit. Um, all of those roles have taught me something unique and different that I wouldn't have learned any other way. Um, but they all kind of make me have this kind of view on things because I've seen it in corporate environments. I've seen it in education. I've seen it in my own company. I've seen it in the military. I've seen it in every business space. The problem is, is the sky is falling and no one else can see it but you. So we're going to talk about how to show them. And how do you show them? By doing it. So back to what Jason said about some of the Sun Tzu training. Uh, yeah, best hacker, most well-known hacker, period. Right? You study some of that work. You study battle tactics, some of the great tacticians. I know we talked about in the cyber warfare speech, right? If you study military tacticians, you will learn some very interesting things about what your job is to do. And I think oftentimes we consider ourselves way too electronic and cool to go back to Moat Castle, grab a sword, go fight somebody. And it's kind of what we do for a living, but we got to really connect to that. Like humans have known how to protect themselves for thousands of years. Why do we suck at it now? Because it's a computer? Bad excuse. It's just it's a poor excuse. Right? These are very obvious things. How do these apply to your daily life attacking a company or being a security professional or fending off attackers or being an attacker? Right? If you can modify your tactics, well, yeah, if you don't modify them, you don't get in. If they don't modify them, they don't get in. If you're defending against a static, constant threat, it's easy to stop. 
If you're defending against a dynamic threat, it becomes very complex to th stop. And that's what we're here to do, right? Is to not only stop the easy stuff, but stop complex things. So you have to get in that mindset of thinking. So what's, what's red team testing? Um, there's a whole bunch of words. You can read them. I don't even remember what it says. But my, my, at the end of the day, it's all about how do you know if you can put up a fight if you've never been in one? Or if you've never been hit before, how do you know? How do you know that your controls work? How do you know that your firewall does anything? I bought a firewall. What do you do with it? I let it sit in a lack and blink. And it does stuff. What does it do? It stops attacks. Really? Prove it. Attack it. Well, nah. I'll scan it, though. You know, no, attack the thing. And if it doesn't work, pull it out of the rack, because it's useless. Why are you spending money on that if it does nothing? So prove what these things that are in there to do, do. Right? You have a kiosk. Awesome. Beat the crap out of it. Piss him off. Make him stay up all night. Uh, I mean, you know, this is, this is the mentality that you have to try and get in. If you're going to have somebody that has no rules in a fight, then you have to have no rules in defense. So why? It goes beyond compliance. I know, right? Throw rocks at the crazy witch man. Dude, compliance isn't security. It's not. Compliance only does one thing. Makes you comply. It's a great, it, it's a great starter. I, I will never kill it for that. And I'll never have it go away because it gets people started to do something. But it's not the end of the line. It's not the be-all, end-all task. It's not the, oh, I did PCI, so I'm safe. That's the most ridiculous example. Did anyone have an idea of the average card processing environment? How much of the enterprise it is? Usually 2 to 5 percent. Yeah, I'm compliant 2 to 5 percent. I'm 100 percent of my 2 percent. So my whole company now is compliant and we're safe. Stupid. That's like saying I locked up my bread so you can't break into my house. It, it, it's silly, right? Why do we also do it? Simulates real attacks. Hackers don't have scopes? Good. You're a tester. You're trying to simulate being an attacker? Be an attacker. You don't have a scope anymore. Why? Because attackers don't. That's what you want me to do, right? You want to see if a bad guy can get in? I'm going to be a bad guy. And I'm going to do it well. I'm going to look at all the intel. I'm going to take my time. This is not a race. Race to shell means you're not doing your job right. It's all about elegance. It's all about being complete. It's about doing it in a standard process and getting achievable and trendable results consistently and being dynamic at the same time. It's possible, right? It's possible to have a process that moves all over the place and still get consistent results. Because that's the problem that management always says. Oh, well, if you do it however you want, you can't be consistent. You're wrong. Attackers are consistent. They consistently win. OK? 1% of your assets we talked about. And at the end of it, you never know the value of anything in your life as much as you do when you do not have it anymore. Be it that a significant other, a family member, the $50 that you thought you had in your wallet when you went out drinking, and then you didn't in the morning. Don't worry, you didn't lose it. You just got drunk. But these are the things that, that oh, all of a sudden I'm concerned. I don't have it. I go into my server room. There's no servers. This is a big concern for me. I had servers here yesterday. Right? You think somebody's going to react and change the lock on the door when they go into the data center and there's no servers? Answer, yes. OK. Why is traditional testing dead? Because it does nothing. I mean, it really does. It doesn't do much for you. All it does is say, OK, you know, that's like saying, all right, Chris, I, I want to fight you on a Wednesday in March after I've trained for like eight months, but you can't do anything, and you have to have this leg tied to this arm, and you're not allowed to hit me. So I figure that'll test my fighting ability. 